Hey brothers and sisters, it's Thursday and I don't normally do um, a visit to a hospital on a Thursday, but I did one today and I just wanted to get on here because God is so amazing walking by the Spirit always. It's just so amazing and I do want to thank you because I know that you do pray for me and um, it's only God. How does he arrange these things? It's just a miracle. It really is. Um, so uh, it turned out that the person who I was supposed to go with, their dog was sick. And so they thought, well, you'll just want to cancel the visit. And I was like, no, I don't want to cancel the visit. <laughs> no, nope, didn't want to cancel the visit. And so um, we prepared to go and uh, I got to spend three hours at the hospital. Lexi is the most amazing dog. Um, got to visit some incredible people. Um, just one of the stories, I mean, there are several stories, but one of the stories was I went into a room where these two men were in there talking. And, um, you know, I like, I like to listen to people's stories just like I like it that you like to listen to my stories. And um, one of the men uh, was going through all of his health problems. Um, and he was talking to me, he's known, the other man he's known for a long time. And, um, but anyway, he was the son of a pastor and both of his brothers were pastors. And he said, you know, my wife has brought me this um, little devotional and, um, it was so cool because it was open. He, he says, I'm reading it every day now and I'm really enjoying it. And he's like, you know, it's really strange, but this seems to fit. Each day seems to fit exactly what is going on in my life. And um, so I was telling him about, he had it, he had it sitting on top of a, a regular Bible. And so I opened it up and I talked to him about the um, scriptures that were in there. Um, I'm trying to remember what I know Psalm 1 was one of the scriptures I don't remember the others but anyway I said to I said to him you know I said you know you can also just take your Bible like I'm gonna do here take your Bible and close your eyes and just say God I want to see what it is you want me to see and I opened it up to Job now yesterday I talked about Job 37 which I did read last night, which is about the thunderous voice of God. Um, I'll get back to that in just a second. But when I said, I said, oh, look, we opened up to Job. And I just thought yesterday, God told me to read Job 37. And the man said, that's my birthday, 3-7. And I was like, yeah, God speaks to people, and he told me yesterday to read Job three, uh, Job 37. So the guy is like all excited, right? And then the funny thing is, the other man says, let me tell you, I got saved by reading Job. Here comes, here's Lexi. She just wants a little, you want to come up here and say hello? Or are you too tired? Okay. Okay. Um, She's such a good girl. Three hours at the hospital. She's amazing. So anyway, the other guy says, let me tell you, I got saved the first. Come back here. Come here. Come on. Come on. Up here. Good girl. Good girl. Can you say that? Whoop, whoop. I'm losing her. <laughs> yeah, you got to come all the way up here. Come on. You can come all the way up here. Come on. Good girl. Okay, you got to turn around the other way. I don't want to see your back end. Lexi, turn around this way. Good girl, come here. Good girl, okay. Whoop, whoop. There we go, okay, we got the dog. The therapy dog extraordinaire. So she's in the room, she gets to listen to all these stories, don't you girl? Yes, she's so good. So this man says, I got saved off of the book of Job and he broke out in goosebumps. He goes, whoa! He says, what are these? I got goosebumps. I said, that's the Holy Spirit. And he said, yeah, the first time I read Job, I just started crying. And I, I believed in God when I read Job. Now, isn't that wonderful? I had put in a, um, 
um, a comment on my video yesterday that um, Job was actually the first book of the Bible that I read when I got saved and I spent uh, I told I told my it's on my one of my older videos but anyway I told my husband here I've been suicidal for nine months I said I'm not going to the Caribbean I'm not going on that vacation to Atlantis with you and my son Austin I said I'm just gonna stay at home and spend the week with God and they're like yeah right mom is really crazy and during that week the first book of the Bible I read was the book of Job and every day God was just talking I was writing stuff down um, I remember one time he gave me like seven things in like 45 minutes and I was just writing them down there were things that he wanted me to do um, including uh, he told me to call my mother-in-law even though she hurts me which I did do uh, did not go well I believe my mother-in-law might have actually committed the unforgivable sin and the seventh thing was to forgive the other woman my best friend who had been sleeping with my husband for two and a half years he said you've got to forgive her and I was like okay God I, I you know I'll do that anyway during that week I only slept two hours every night God was just talking talking teaching I, I would be on the floor and I would stick my hand under the bed and there was another another um, book with a message for me to read two hours for seven days I slept two hours so I slept a total of 14 hours I remember thinking it was just so crazy it was two hours each day I'd go to bed at you know whatever time during the night and say God just let me sleep how long I need to sleep and then wake me up when we're ready to go again and almost exactly two hours each night so this guy had gotten saved off of Job and is having goosebumps talking about it in the in the hospital room and I did tell the other man he says you know I, re I really do need to start reading the Bible I said listen yes you're enjoying this devotional and it's really great um, I forget it, it was a, vo a devotional about um, an anchor I think an anchor for my soul kind of like a sailboat right um, but I, I said you know it's like you're eating a happy meal every day you're not getting enough nutrition and then the other really strange thing was um, I was telling him about he has a, a old dog who has a lot of health problems and I was telling him about giving your dog fish oil just like people should be taking fish oil and then the other guy says look and he had given them a container of black seed oil and actually black seed oil is in the Bible it's one of the um, oils that was in the Bible so that was really funny so that was a great bit I had a lot of I, I walked into a room where a woman was praying for her friend and um, I just said oh are you I'm sorry are you praying and she said yeah come on in and so I joined in and we prayed together for this woman named Mary um, you know very cool um, not at the same hospital where I go to visit the pregnant women by the way um just it, it was just really it, i mean okay so the amazing thing was i get to, I, i'm seeing all these different people i'm going and seeing um different uh, people in uh waiting rooms and patient rooms and uh it turns out that the last person i go in to i mean because i'm thinking i've been here for two and a half hours well it turns out the last person hi kurt is we start talking and we actually used to work together for IBM back in the 70s okay yes I'm that old he's that old and not only that but we had gone to the same church back in the old days okay so we talked and talked and had all these names of people I mean he had an incredible memory of people that we had worked with um, he knew uh, I mean he knew so many people that I had known uh, back in that church's day when I wasn't born again and um, I told him ab about me getting saved and um, he he was just right on he was like he was telling me about his um, I think it's his sister and brother-in-law who had um, gone more the Pentecostal route and uh, he was just talking about 
we were talking about the balance with the spirit but also being in the word and um it was just like i just can't i mean the nurse one of the nurses came in and out and i said i'm sorry but we we know each other we you know we know each other and um just how you know what a small world it is and actually that nurse when i was leaving i said i know that seemed really strange and she said no it was great it was great for his spirits um he had pretty much a miraculous uh health uh like an embolism i think he said in his leg that shot up to his heart i believe um you know i really don't pay i mean i listen to the people's health problems but i'm the whole time thinking and he said some several of them would say you know i'm i'm doing well with my health and spiritually so that's just so good because our spiritual health and uh actually he did mention um the rapture too so uh, he asked for my channel and all that so i'm i'm hoping that he's watching and i'm hoping that uh i'll get to hear from him again if not here in heaven and uh, then i was meeting with different staff and everything and so this is what's so funny the la the last like I've been there for three hours. I go d get on the elevator again and I go down to the ground floor to walk out and I see this profile of a woman walk right past me and so she's right in front of me. I'm looking at behind and I, I said, ma'am, I know you <laughs> and turned around and it's a woman named Janet who I knew from my kids school and also from uh, BSF, from Bible Study Fellowship, which is where uh, I've done 12 years of um, my Bible training. One of my, that's like the Bible study that I've been in for 12 years. I do additional Bible studies uh, in other places, but I'm just like, I can't believe, you know, that the timing, really the timing to get off the elevator and just see just the quickest glimpse of her profile and just like okay I'm gonna go for it and then it's her and we walk out together and um, it was just such a blessing it's just such a blessing how does God orchestrate that okay and then last I um, I look you know I looked at some car tags I took car tag pictures and um, so I've written, I came home and wrote some notes down here. So I uh, just wanted to point out a, a couple of funny things. I didn't bring my phone and I'm actually having to hold my computer so it doesn't uh, fall into the pool. Um, okay, CFI, like maybe Christians fly imminently and then 1015. Well, 1015, um, me it's got a scripture associated which is jeremiah 48 22 i do love 22 it only has two occurrences and the other one is a hill will be brought low and that's from luke 23 29 through 30 if you want to look that up so that wasn't really the 10 15 i haven't really looked at that that much but i just thought it was kind of interesting then the next one Nick, yeah, maybe it'd be better for me to stick that up there so y'all can see. So then the next one is BYI 3677, and in the Greek it means a dream, in a dream. And the scriptures that go with that are about Joseph and the dreams that uh, he had about um, baby Jesus and how Mary was actually giving birth to God's son that she had not been unfaithful and also about Pilate's wife remember um, Pilate Jesus is going to be judged by Pilate and I believe Pilate is I didn't, did I write down this I didn't write down the scripture but Pilate is um, warned by his wife I had a dream about this righteous man you don't want to mess with him I had a dream about him but of course, Pilate did not listen to his wife. <laughs> um, yeah, that was another, I mean, that's another, it's funny too to see, to see these patients. And one of the men who I spent a lot of time with was, uh, I mean, you know, I give, I give, I give. But this man, he was like trying to tell me 
all this stuff about all of these people and how they were immoral and all of that and um, and I kept saying I don't want to talk about politics I don't want to talk about politics but he just wanted to let me have have it all and uh, and you know he talked about how he likes dogs and hates his ex-wife and I said well I'm sorry but I happen to be an ex-wife <laughs> you know and I know I said I know a lot of times people don't like um, their wives or their ex-wives because they don't like to listen to um, to them talk and really he didn't want to listen to me talk either he just wanted to do all the talking but I gave him my time okay so then also uh, so BYI um, believers oh what did I have that I had um, believers I forgot what the you what the why was oh well Okay, so I, once again, I thought the other one was CFI, like Christians fly imminently. And then I had believers something imminently. And 3677 in Hebrew, if you can see in my big capital letters, look at that. A full moon. Now, a lot of people are looking at the 27th, which is Pentecost on the Enoch calendar. And it's also um, the 11th day of the third month on, I don't even remember what calendar, but there it was, a full moon, which is the 29th. So like the 27th, 28th, 29th, being like a three-day window. And this is the verse. It's in two verses, Psalm 81.3. This is in the American Standard Version. Blow the trumpet at the new moon at the full moon on our feast day now isn't that interesting blow the trumpet at the new moon at the full moon on our feast day i thought that was really weird so that's psalm 81 3 if you want to look it up and then the other one is proverbs 7 20 that says um he will take a bag of money with him he will come at the full moon proverbs 7 20 he doth take a bag of money with him he will come at the full moon thought that was kind of interesting and then um, another tag i saw was hu8 g88 now that looks sort of like a got uh harpazo up is what i would say harpazo up God up to God 888 which we know means Jesus Christ but I did look up 88 which means um, in Hebrew it means to journey to move out and camp or pitch a tent that's interesting and then in the Greek it means incessant like continuous prayer like uh, praying without ceasing and in se it refers to 2nd Timothy 1 3 I thank God whom whom I serve from my forefathers with a pure conscience that without ceasing I have remembrance of you in my prayers day and night so this was Paul talking to Timothy that he loved Timothy and he prayed without ceasing for Timothy um, with a clean conscience because you know the prayers of the righteous avail much right the only prayers that the wicked that God will hear the only prayers of the well yeah actually I'm gonna say the prayers of the wicked God does not listen to unless it's that you want to repent um, in fact uh, I think it's in first Peter it says that um, a man should not mistreat his wife or his prayers will be hindered so mistreating your covenant wife makes God say nope not gonna listen not gonna listen so um, those were just some interesting things full moon possibility um, I don't know I'm just excited I, I I go to the hospital again tomorrow so we'll see what I see but I just wanted to get on here and tell you just can you believe that that you just 
everywhere you go there's a possibility that there's a soul connection that you you know we are body mind and spirit and the spirit within us and I mean I met some people that their light shines just their light just shines uh, I, I gave a few total strangers hugs because I was like you could just see the light shining in them and and we hugged each other Lexi's gonna start barking but anyway I wish I could send you some virtual hugs I love you I I hope that you are praying without ceasing and I thank you for your prayers for me and I am praying for you too even if you've got dis difficult circumstances you know there's a lot of circumstances we don't like but uh, being in the word is your food instead of having a, a snack a, you know a happy meal by devotional get into the Bible and get a full meal okay God wants to give you a full meal uh, in fact that was well, let me just say one other thing it was surprising how many people talked to me about false teachers uh, Joel Osteen's name came up Andy Stanley's name came up here in Atlanta that some people actually recognize that he's a false teacher and that they were willing they just brought it up to me pretty amazing pretty amazing so um, there are people that are getting it there are people that are understanding which is another sign of the apostate church and then the remnant the remnant sees who is apostate and who is the false teacher and you know the Bible says that we are to expose the false teacher in fact he says whatever I whisper to you in the night you're supposed to shout it from the rooftops so I guess I'm shouting a bunch of stuff from the rooftops I hope that something that I said helped you I love you and uh, thanks for watching oh I was trying to think oh yeah I'm gonna put in a link there's a girl who got saved uh, who got she was saved and she started to um, move into uh, getting remarried and as she was teaching her child because she was divorced and she was gonna get remarried as she was teaching her child the Ten Commandments she's God she said to her child her child said you know what is adultery and when she started explaining it the spirit within her God said you are the adulteress. I've had that. I've had that. And I know some other some other uh, people have also had that booming loud voice of God. That's the voice of God in Job 37. The thunderous voice. <laughs> it's a voice that brings you to your knees, brings brought me to my face, trembling to my face. So he does still speak. And um I just hope he's speaking to you. So I love you. Thanks a lot. Oh, and the, and the woman who did the video on it, uh, she immediately got out of the relationship, and she was taught. She put a video up yesterday. I don't know how many people watched it because it's a very small channel, but I encourage you to watch her um, because she gives tips on how to not even let men um, lust after her. You know, she's a beautiful young woman, and she's like, even if I walk into a room with police officers who want to be with my kids, I turn away so that I don't lust and so that they don't lust because she doesn't want to be responsible for anyone else's sin. What a great, a great thing for a young woman to do. So, God bless you. I love you. Bye.